What's up, guys? It's Quincy with CoinClub Crypto, and today we're going to be going over how to launch a smart contract onto the FTC network. And I get asked this all the time, Quincy, how do you launch tokens and projects and dApps, and how do you do all these cool things that you talk about? And today I'm going to go over just that. Now, first thing I'm going to go over is I'm actually going to be launching a contract that I actually wrote about on the FTC network in which you're able to generate an NFT that allow you to have permission to a smart contract that has data in it, and holding that NFT will essentially allow you to access that data inside. Now, before we get into all of this, there are a few things you're going to need. First thing is going to be is you're going to need XTC Pay. So you're going to need to go over to the uh, browser store, the browser extension store, and go and download XTC Pay. Then once you have XTC Pay, you're going to need to be able to go over to Remix or their other platforms like Hard Hat and Truffle. But Remix is the easiest one to interact with. You go over to something like Remix, and that's going to be their main place for uh, writing your code and deploying it. And then once you finally deployed it, you're going to need to go to the FTC Observatory to make sure you can check it and make sure it's on chain. Now, let's get right into it. So uh, as you can see here, I already have my code written. But uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is, and this is kind of assuming that you didn't have your code written, is you're going to want to make sure that you're going to be able to test your application. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come over here and go into the JavaScript uh, virtual machine. And this is just allowing you to run your application locally for any test that you may want. And while you're doing this, uh, this will the editor will show you a ton of different means on how to manage your code. So let's say, for instance, I made a mistake here. and you know, you can see an error popped up, and it's going to tell you, oh, look, there's supposed to be an expression here. Something is wrong. And this editor, just like most other editors, will tell you when there's something wrong. And there are other, there are other means of it being able to show you different information that you may need. Then, once you have your contract all written and you've debugged it and checked it over and made sure that you have a little green check mark over here that there aren't any more bugs, what you can do is come over to the deploy and run and come over here and test your contract. Now, with this contract, like I said before, as I deploy it, I'm going to be saving some information into it, and then it's going to generate a token to the address that deployed the contract that's going to give it permission to access that contract. Now, with this, the private data I might just put in as Quincy's cool data, whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. And then here's the URI. So this is something a little bit different, but this goes into what NFTs are and what they do. The URI is just a, it's just a piece of metadata to describe what the contract is or what the token does. And this is usually the place where you see where all those NFT pictures, uh, they usually just take the link of where the picture is and just cram it in the URI and call it a token. But here we're just going to describe what it is. So we might just say private token contract, boom. And we launch it, boom. So currently I just launched the contract locally in order for me, in order for me to test it on my, uh, on my own device. And I'm able to go in here and see all the different functions that this contract is able to provide and test out a bunch of these features. Now, while I'm testing this contract, I can come over over here and see that there are a ton of these accounts um, on, off to the side. These accounts are a series of just test accounts that you're able to use to be able to interact with the contract you just deployed. These are just a bunch of accounts that are really just running locally that allow you to manage, uh, that allow you to test the contract like you would on the blockchain. So let's snag this account up here. Let's snag this address. We're going to, let's see, we're going to see what the balance of this is, token zero. Boom. And as you can see in the console, it was able to execute. It was able to spit out a number over here. So it's showing that I have five tokens. This is really interesting. And I'm able to do quite a few different things here. So now just to sort of illustrate this contract, for instance, let's say I was a address and I wanted to test an address that didn't have uh, access. So I go over here, click on another contract, copy it. And now I'm able to test uh, this contract through an address that is a different address than what I deployed it as. And with, with how this contract works, uh, because this is a different address, you can see that this address has zero tokens, meaning that this is this guy up here. He has no tokens. He has no permission. And you can see that the function ran down here. But let's say I wanted to come in here and test the main function out. So I'm a different address. I just went up there and chose the, uh, the separate address. And I want to make sure that other addresses aren't able to execute this contract. So maybe we're going to click on this. Oh, what's that? Nothing happened. What's over here? It tells me. That's the word. Nothing happened here, and that's part of how the contract works. So let's say I come back and go to that original one and say, oh, this is the person that has permission. Click on it again. Oh, there it is. The data's in there. Ah, I'm able to test that the address A, the address I originally began with, had permission because it launched the contract, while well, address B, the address that I swapped over to again, was basically saying, hey, you don't have access, therefore the data wouldn't be able to persist, and you're able to analyze that information down here in the console. 
and you're able to go through all these different other functionalities and be able to test these out as you see fit based on however your contract is structured. So let's say you tested your contract, you feel really confident about it, you yeah, here we go, check and view status, how many tokens or whatever. Let's say you uh you test your contract, you feel really good about it, now you want to go launch it. Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come all the way up here at the top and you're gonna move from the JavaScript VM to injected web three. Now this is important why you have uh XDC pay, because what this, what's going to do is XDC pay is going to connect to Remix, and it's going to allow me to be able to make executions from uh, Remix onto XDC pay onto the blockchain. So let's say I do that exact same thing, come down here, put in, you know, put these cool data, private uh, token contract, whatever, and I go hit transact. Now, transacting. Now, as you can see, it pops up another window, which is going to be uh, XDC pay showing that a transaction is going to be made. This is just a deploying uh, transaction. I'm going to go submit it as I'm submitting this contract to the blockchain, so I'm going to wait a second. There we go. Boom. All right. And now that I was able to submit that transaction, I go to XDC pay. Ah, here we go. So I got it right down here. Let me click on that. So now that I'm able to see that I deployed the contract, I'm like, all right, cool. Contract's deployed. I'm all done. Oh, wait a second. I need to make sure that it's on the blockchain and make sure that it's operating the way that I want it to and make sure I get a double confirmation just, just so I know that there weren't any issues. So I take contract, come over to the FCC observatory, just place that in there for a search so I can make sure I can confirm that it's on chain. Here we go. Oh, and there we go. Success transaction details. And look at that. I'm able to confirm that the transaction happened on chain. I'm able to see the original address that uh, that launched it, which is my XDC pay address. I'm able to see that this is the address that it launched to. So I'm going to snag that real quick. Boom. Able to see additional, uh, additional details, how much gas is used, the average transaction fee. Woo! Woo! Look at that. Anywho, anywho, I'm able to see all these different, all these different uh, information on the contract and uh, the details of launching that contract. And once I'm able to do all that, let's say I wanted to go view the contract. Now, there's nothing really in the contract. It's really just a mechanism for really just storing that piece of data. And then as I interact with it, uh, I'll be able to retrieve that data. But you're still able to go to the contract itself on the, on the observatory and see that the contract does exist. Now, obviously, if this is something more of a finance contract, you'd be able to see how much XDC is in it, how much that's worth, how many transactions are being made from it. But this just allows you to have the fundamentals of being able to launch your application, check that it's launched, see that it's been confirmed that it's launched, and now be able to interact with it on the blockchain. This is actually really, really, really cool in terms of being able to run, test, and uh, or test, run, or test, deploy, and run your applications uh, live and be able to interact with them in real time. Now, now that I've done all of this, you may be going, well, what's the, how do I deal with my application? And this is where really the real fun begins because now you have to go take the address and this is where kind of the real interface code comes into play. And I'm able to take this address and, inter and, in and take that and put it into my web three code. Let's say I want to create a website and I'm able to interact with this smart contract by taking this address and f uh, porting all of my functions to it through uh, web three, through the web three uh, SDK. And this is kind of a whole nother video in, in per se, but at the very least, I have my contract now on the blockchain. I now have an address associated with it where I can actually interact with it. And then I can use uh, Web3 SDKs to be able to interact with uh, my contract that now persists on the blockchain. And boom, we are done. It's kind of just that easy in regards to being able to uh, engage with different applications. Now, things can be a bit more difficult. Like I said earlier in the video, there are other applications like Truffle and Hard Hat and quite a bunch of other uh, means of being able to launch applications, but Remix is quite the simplest in being able to do so. And I usually recommend using Remix if you're launching like one or two contracts. You're going to get into the multi-contract structures where you're launching 10, 20, 30 contracts that's all part of one application. You may want to go towards uh, some of those other uh, alternatives. But at the end of the day, they all do the same thing, and it's just an easy means of being able to get your applications out there. So if you didn't have too many crazy experience, if you didn't have too much uh, development experience, and you wanted to get a quick, simple, easy way of being able to launch your applications, very easily come over to uh, Remix, make sure you set up uh, XDC pay, make sure you hit uh, Injected Web 3, launch it, and boom, go through the steps, make sure that you uh, sign transactions and confirm it, on the, confirm it on the network, and you are good to go. 
I hope that was very helpful for everybody. And if you have any questions, definitely comment them down below. And I will see you guys in the next one.